Ah, uh, a glass of chilled white wine and the electronic module out of a toilet fan. Life is good. This toilet fan incidentally came from eBay. And it came from a UK-ish supplier. I say UK-ish, it doesn't seem to... It doesn't have a professional flair to it. Here is the manual, which is kind of like shredded diagonally. Uh, which excludes some of the information and doesn't necessarily relate totally to this uh, this unit, nor the information. It's a bit odd. Anyway, let's take a look at it. So the fan, uh, I should explain. In the UK, our bathrooms, the room with the toilet and the shower and the bath in it, typically has a wall fan that is either four inch, six inch, could be any size. And there's a little electronic module in it. And when you turn the light switch on, the fan starts as well. And uh, when you've finished having your, your business, if you've gone in for a quick pee or whatever, some of these, I think this might do this, have a time delay that as soon as you turn the light off, the fan goes straight off again. But if you've been in for a longer time, like having a poo or having a shower or a bath, it will run on for a time that has been determined by the time setting the potentiometer. That could go in this unit from about 15 seconds up to 45 minutes, I think, which divides nicely into a binary multiple, which we'll look at later in the actual schematic. And the idea is that by continuing to run after you've left, it just takes the remnants of the humidity or smell out of what you've done. I shall put that out the way because we're interested in this little module here. So on the module, and I'll zoom down this, and it's unusual that this one has a humidity sensor as well. There's the track that controls the motor and the fan. Here's the humidity sensor. This sets the humidity threshold and this sets the time. I think the idea of that is it will run for a certain time, but if the humidity is above a certain level, uh, as detected by this it, and the setting here, it will just keep running until the humidity is reduced to a sensible level. Let's take a look at the circuit board, which I conveniently have right here in a blown out of proportion type size. Note that the text is back to front simply because I flipped these images just to make them match what was in the back of the circuit board. It just made it easier to reverse engineer. So there's the supply cables coming in. Uh, there is the TRIAC, which is a little T092 type package, a BT131. Uh, we have a metal oxide varistor which clamps any voltage spikes. We have a 1K resistor, brown, black, red, one zero and two zeros uh, to give 1,000 ohms. And that is actually before this metal oxide varistor. I'll show you that in the schematic and it's part of the power supply. Here's another part of the power supply, the smoothing capacitor. There are the two potentiometers, both 500K, and there is the humidity sensor. Now, the humidity sensor in its own right is very, very interesting. On the back of the circuit board, we have a 100 nanofarad, fairly high voltage rated capacitor, uh, which forms part of the power supply circuitry. And then we've got this very tight bit of circuitry here. Uh, two little SOT23 packages, a Zener diode and a dual diode package, which is quite, a, this is a really tight bit of circuitry, quite neat. And then the electrolytic. We have a identifiable microcontroller, which makes a change. We have the transistor. Uh, the transistor has a special function here. And we have the humidity sensor on the other side. Oh, and also, see these two, 205, 20 and 50, so 2 million megohm, 2 megohm, um, not 2 million megohm, 2 million ohms, 2 megohm. We've got two of them in series for 4 megohm. Uh, they detect the switch input from the light switch and also, it oddly, it detects the live as well. I think it might be using it as a timing reference. Let's take a look at the schematic. So the schematic is divided in two sections for ease of uh, digesting its technical knowledge. Here's the live and neutral come in. I've drawn the neutral at the top for a very specific reason because it is also the plus 5 volt rail and the 0 volt rail is negative to that. So effectively the triac, which is referenced to the neutral, is being pulled with its gate. It's being pulled negative. Now a triac is a, a little specialist component that is designed to switch alternating current. It can switch in both directions, but you can also uh, trigger it in all directions. Uh, whether the, this end's positive or negative uh, and this end's uh, the triac, you can, the gate of it, wow, 
Let's try that again. Too much wine, perhaps. Whether this end is positive or negative, it doesn't matter. Or the gate is positive or negative, it doesn't matter. It will trigger it. But it's most sensitive when pulled negative to the uh, what they call MT2. This is MT1. This is MT2, main terminal 1, main terminal 2, and the gate. Useful little components. Also worth mentioning that once you've triggered them, they latch on, they stay on. Uh, solidly until the main uh, sine wave crosses through the zero crossing point. The current drops to zero and these will reset and then it just gets driven again by the microcontroller. There are the two uh, two mega ohm resistors in series for both the switch, l switch live from the light switch and also the general live. I think it, the only reason I can think for this is it's using it as a nice 50 or 60 hertz timing reference. So the live comes in and it's limited by this resistor. It's a very low current circuit, so it's using a capacitive dropper, but because it's quite a low value, 100 nanofarad here of the capacitor, um, it's, uh, it can have a big high value resistor. That has multiple advantages. It reduces the inrush current if there's spikes and glitches. If you turn the, circuit, the power on at the peak of the sine wave or if there's, if there's a lot of electrical noise, capacitive droppers will generally pass that noise because the capacitor will just basically gate through uh, glitches and high frequency noise. So this is where the 1K resistor comes in handy. I suppose that also acts as a fuse in a way. The fact that the 470 volt metal oxide varistor, now depending on how you want to draw it, you might want to draw it like that or that, uh, that isn't actually having a very hard life because when it clamps any voltage spike, which is purely protect the electronic circuitry, uh, this 1K resistor is actually doing most of the work there. So there's the 100 nanofarad capacitor, but because it's being referenced to one of the supply rails, it has a very simple system that if it's a negative, current flows from the zero volt through this diode, but if it's positive, it just bypasses it straight to the neutral. It means it's a very it's almost inefficient, but it's not need it doesn't need to be efficient in this case because it's very low current. It's not as efficient as having the full bridge rectifier. But with the two diodes, it uh, basically creates a, a 5 volt rail with reference direct reference to one of the supply, the AC supply rails. That's pretty hard to describe, actually. Now, these two diodes have hours pointing at them from PY. That is sweet. It's a little dual diode package. Um, and it just means it's a tiny little SOT 23 package. That's, uh, that's it there. Uh, and just the way they've done it is just, it's kind of cute really, I quite like that. Likewise, the Zener diode is a Z2, it's also a SOT23, 5.1 volt, doesn't have to be big, not dissipating a lot of heat. This whole circuit runs at very low current. The most current is needed by the Triac, which takes about 3 milliamps to drive, so it's well rated for that. So the Zener diode clamps it to 5.1 volt, the 220 microfarad capacitor smooths that, and then there's a decoupling capacitor mainly for the microcontroller. And that is that. The PY, incidentally, the dual uh, diode is a BAV23SE. Quite interesting package. Um, and the fan motor being switched with the track, that's the full power supply covered. Let's go on to the actual, the exciting bit. The electronics. The microcontroller, because that's what they've used. So the microcontroller has one output. Well, one output for functional purposes, and that is to the track. And it's got a 1K resistor. 5 volt supply, 1K resistor, also the uh, gate drop of the track, which is, say, about 1 volt. 0 0.6 to 1 volt means that this 1K resistor is going to easily pass the 3 milliamps required to drive that triac. The two inputs the from those uh, resistors, these little resistor dividers here, these well, these resistor current limiters, the two, two mega ohm resistors in series for 4 mega ohm, they go straight to the microcontroller. That's a common thing. Uh, it doesn't matter the fact it's quite a high voltage because the inputs of the microcontrollers have a, have a diode to the positive rail and a diode to the negative rail that basically stops uh, the supply rail being exceeded by a, a 
excess voltage uh, and it's a common technique for detecting in the case of the ac one it's detecting the zero crossing point and as i say i think that's either for uh, timing purposes or it might be so the track is only fired at the zero crossing point to reduce the current spike through the track perhaps because it's there's at the zero cross point there's zero uh, current flowing through the track and the uh, switch input is just purely monitoring that uh, light switch it's worth mentioning that for safety uh, these wall fans have a isolator next to them that breaks not just the live but also the switched feed as well Sometimes uh, I, I'm, I'm not really up to date with that. Does it break the neutral as well? I think it probably does because they're all super safe these days. The microcontroller also has a little capacitor because it's got an internal reference VCAP, it's called, 1.8 volt. It provides its own 1.8 volt reference. That's probably for uh, analog to digital converters and it's using them on this. So it's got one output here and then one input. The input is from the humidity sensor, but the output is doing double duty. It's acting both as an input and an output. Now, here is the time setting potentiometer, and it simply goes between 0 volts and the 5 volts. So this uh, plus 5 is actually tied up to that rail. And it's got a 200k resistor for a good reason. So I'm guessing that maybe it only looks at this when it's powered up, but it might not be. But uh, either way, it reads that potentiometer just as an input by looking at the analog voltage. It's going to either be 5 volts or it's going to be 0 volts. And that's going to give it the uh, software cue for the time delay. It's just going to use a, it's going to convert that to digital uh, 0 to 255 level roughly, uh, which will uh, determine uh, the time delay it incorporates for you turning off the switch and how long the fan runs. But that input is also an output. And the output, when it's triggered, has a capacitor isolating it from a transistor. And the reason for this is because the sensor, the humidity sensor, looks like this inside. It's a ceramic substrate with conductive carbon ink electrodes, little fingers interleaving. And then what you can't see here is that printed over the top of that is a polymer that is hygroscopic. It absorbs moisture. And depending on the humidity, it will have a specific resist resistance that relates to that humidity. And you cannot use these res as resistors as such because if you've seen these modules on eBay, and they are available on eBay right now. Don't buy these modules. You get two versions. You get the version with the relay. You get a version that just puts the analog and digital output to your Arduino. And it uses these sensors wrongly. They, it's going to destroy these sensors. These modules just won't work in the long term. Because it's using that resistor, that variable resistor, in conjunction with this potentiometer. And it's sensing that uh, the voltage divider voltage, depending on humidity, with an LM. Uh, probably LM of the generic op amp 358 I'm guessing that's a 358 that kind of fits but that's the wrong way to use these you can't use these like that because if you use them as a voltage divider and you're passing DC across it it causes uh, electrolysis effects it causes migration of the material from the electrodes into the uh, the conductive gel on the surface and it damages it changes its uh, state and it makes it drift quite significantly over time so to avoid that you actually have to use these with a capacitor in series basically and you have to pump them and then get your voltage measurement uh, by causing, say, this end going positive, and then it goes, uh, ugh, drawn diagonally, positive, and then negative, which means current flows through in one direction, and then it flows through in the other, and that counteracts itself by pro uh, providing AC current flow through these. So the way it's doing this is this transistor has a pull-down resistor. It's all low current, 200K pull-down resistor, and a transistor pulling up to the positive rail. And when the microcontroller pulses that output, this capacitor ensures that there's just a pulse fed to the transistor. It can't pull it on continually. And that, also, that capacitor also 
decouples these resistors so that it can actually monitor this input. It's quite complex. They've cheated in a very clever way. I mean, the person who designed the circuitry was on the ball. They, they knew their stuff. Um, so that capacitor lets them treat that as an input and the output because this transistor will need to be pulsed. When the transistor is pulsed on, it pulls the input to this capacitor positive uh, and then when it turns off, it goes negative again. And that's your AC. It's providing that sort of positive transition and negative transition so that this humidity sensor here can only see current flow in one direction of a certain amount and then the current flow back in the same amount so it doesn't damage it. It doesn't cause that electrolysis effect. That then forms a potential divider with uh, this 39K resistor. Now, the reason... There's a question mark next to this. <laughs> is because I had a bit of an incident. The resistor was either upside down or unmarked or something. So I measured it in circuit and got 39k. I then thought I should take that out of circuit and measure it. And I took it out of circuit and then it was a bit floppy and there's a big blob of soda on one end. So I grabbed it in the tweezers and thought, as I was doing it, I thought, I better not ping this. And then it pinged and it's gone. It's... That resistor's toast. It, it, it's somewhere in this room. I don't know where it is. Anyway, once removed, that was quite high impedance. So I'm guessing it was a 39K resistor. Probably. It's gone. Can't prove that. Uh, likewise, these capacitors in circuit, I measured 4.5 nanofarad. Closest to that is 4.7 nanofarad. 800 nanofarad. Closest to that is probably about 1 microfarad. Um, to tune the value of that humidity sensor. They've got a 620k resistor in parallel with it. Uh, and then the tap of this potential divider is going through a potentiometer and then a resistor. And that again is to tune it, probably in this case, to tune it up in the upper level of its range. So it's only looking at humidities between about say 60 to 90 percent. These resistors are all chosen. Uh, the parallel one and then this one and the arrangement of these resistors is chosen just to tune it so the full span of that uh, potentiometer, that variable resistor, just covers the range they wanted. It tunes it in. And then the output of that, as a measured as a slight voltage, goes to the input of the microcontroller. And therefore, when it toggles that output, it pulses it, it can actually look at the input and it can see what the humidity is in the room. It's very clever. Maybe I shouldn't have drunk so much wine before making this video, but you know what? It made it so much easier and more fun in the process. But that is it. It's an interesting little circuit board. I could replace that with a 39K resistor and it may work again, but it doesn't really matter. Because the only reason I bought it was to take the thing apart so we could take a look at the circuit board inside it and we could reverse engineer and see how they'd actually measured the humidity. And uh, it's worth mentioning that you do get other humidity sensors for the Arduino type modules that are not the little two pin ones. They are three pin ones. The three pin ones are fine. Uh, DHT11 is it? DT11? Not sure. There's a couple of different models, but they have three pins and uh, it's basically five volts, zero volts and data and those things have all the circuitry built into them and uh, they will provide temperature and humidity uh, as a data stream back but that is it very interesting circuitry well worth exploring um, and it was worth getting just to do that just to see how they'd done that with a cheap humidity sensor very very interesting